This is KGW News at Noon. In Oregon, for the crime of murder in the second degree, the sentence is a life sentence. I'll order that you be considered for parole after 25 years. We begin inside the courtroom this afternoon as local romance novelist Nancy Crampton Brophy receives her sentencing. She'll serve life in prison with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Last month, a jury found Crampton Brophy guilty of killing her husband, Daniel Brophy, who was an instructor at the Oregon Culinary Institute. Her trial lasted about seven weeks before the jury convicted her of second degree murder. We'll have more reaction to today's sentencing tonight during the news at 4 p.m. Good afternoon and welcome to the news at noon. I am Drew Carney and our next stop here at noon is Washington DC where the January 6th committee held another round of hearings earlier today. During these hearings, lawmakers are focusing on former President Donald Trump and how his claims of voter fraud sparked the attack at the Capitol in early January of 2021. During today's session, previously recorded testimony from several key witnesses were shared, including testimony from Bill Stepien, Trump's 2020 campaign manager. Stepien said he believed the 2020 race was too close to call on election night, but Trump went ahead and declared himself the winner anyway. Also today, we heard recorded testimony from former White House advisor Ivanka Trump. I don't know that I had a, a firm view um, as to what he should say uh, in that circumstance. The results were still being counted. Um, it was becoming clear that the race would not be called um, on election night. Committee members say they've uncovered enough evidence for the Justice Department to consider unprecedented criminal indictment against the former president. The next January 6th hearing is scheduled for this Wednesday. All right, now back to some local headlines today. And we start with this new video of street racing on the Burnside Bridge. Portland police were spread all across the city over the weekend because of an activity like this. They say there were four different street racing events last night alone into this uh, early this morning and several people were arrested or cited. Also in our headlines this afternoon, the Portland Charter Commission will vote on finalized charter amendments tomorrow that could change the way Portland's government works. The 20 person Charter Commission is considering changes like how many people are on city council and what exactly their roles are. After the commission weighs in this week, voters will get to decide if the charter amendments are adopted this November. And finally, take a look at this water overtaking Selwood Riverfront Park. This is just south of Oaks, uh, Oaks Amusement Park over the weekend. The National Weather Service says Portland is seeing its wettest spring in 81 years. And uh, anyone living around here right now would probably not argue with that, Rod Hill. That's a look at some of our local headlines. But we want to jump over to you, my friend, in the Weather Center, because you talked about it this morning on the uh, morning show. More rain in the first 12 days of this month than we saw in April, May, and June of last year altogether. And that's something uh, we're talking about. We just barely got over two inches total a year ago for the months of April, May, June combined. Right. We've had over two inches of rain just this first two weeks of June. So to me, that really summarizes how incredibly record dry it was a year ago. And the fact that this year we've actually tipped the scale exactly in the opposite direction in terms of record rains. This has led to a flood warning. I don't think this is overly a big deal, but uh, there are localized areas receiving some flooding. This is for the Columbia. Right now up in Longview, we're just under 11 feet. The flood stage is 13.5. Vancouver's gauge is currently setting at the 16 foot flood stage. Now the Weather Service doesn't believe these levels will fluctuate more than a few inches today or tomorrow and then on Wednesday early in the morning the levels will start to go down and should continue to go down more on all the rain that we've been collecting so the tipping point in terms of the Columbia and some of our larger rivers taking another jump words in terms of running bank full came with that rain we had last Thursday then the record total on Friday that was 1.42 for June so far 2.77 we're only halfway through the records 4.27 in 2010 we're now keeping an eye on that and then if you go back to April 1 we're now over a foot of rain again a year ago we were only a little bit more than two inches for the same time period and this is huge so the water year which runs in in uh, along the, the parallel of the snowpack season, which runs October 1 through September 30th, 
is now over 40 inches. So that's awesome news there. It's the first time we've had a 40 inch water year and an above normal water year since 2016, 17. Four years in a row of subpar rainfall, we've erased that run, so that's good news. Showers out there right now, some rainy areas, we'll call it down around Camby and also Troutdale getting out into the gorge. We're at 59. Generally speaking, a mix of dry and showers passing this afternoon. And Drew, I still think temps will get up to about 65. Back to you. All right, we'll have more from Rod coming up here in a few minutes. Right now, though, back to another story that we're following this afternoon. 31 suspected white nationalists were arrested in North Idaho over the weekend including a man from Prospect, Oregon. Prosecutors are charging all of them with conspiracy to riot and are now working with the FBI. So here's some background on this situation. A 911 caller described seeing in their words, a little army at a local hotel there. Police found the group crammed inside a U-Haul wearing protective equipment, wearing masks, and they were also wearing shirts with slogans like Reclaim America. Authorities say they also carry paperwork similar to an operations plan that a police or military group would put together. The men traveled from more than 10 different states and were allegedly united by the group Patriot Front. Today we heard from the police chief in this part of northern Idaho. But I had never seen the, that type of activity in this area in my eight years working for this police department. The group was expected to appear in court today but that's not going to happen now because they were bonded out. So instead, all 31 men have until June 30th to contact the court and set up a court date. Also this weekend, thousands of people across the country rallied to demand more action on gun violence. It's part of the annual March for Our Lives protest. And here in Portland, we saw more than 300 people show up to march on Saturday. Alma McCarty spoke to some of those demonstrators. Our Protesters of all ages marched through the streets of Portland as part of a nationwide movement. These rallies, organized by March for Our Lives, a youth-driven group first created by students who survived the mass shooting at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Parkland, Florida. I immediately wanted to join and try and lead the Portland chapter. Athena Su Chen said the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas, especially struck a chord. It was kids who are younger than my little brother getting shot and killed. An 18 year old should not be able to get an assault rifle and mow down a whole bunch of little kids who are just there to learn. Some in the crowd, like Paul Kemp, uh, this is my brother-in-law, Steve, who was killed at the mall, have spent years working towards meaningful action against gun violence. I got involved in the gun violence prevention movement when my brother-in-law was killed at the Clackamas Town Center shooting in 2012. I'm a gun owner. And the things that I learned about that shooting uh, really got me angry. Between then and now, he said several reforms have happened on a state level, but there's much more work to be done. Really need movement and action at the federal level. Um, that's where I've been focusing. We've got to improve things because clearly what the country has been doing and the states have been doing isn't enough. Demonstrators and organizers called for raising the minimum age to purchase assault weapons, for universal background checks, and for a national gun buyback program. We have to stand up because thoughts and prayers don't change policies. We just cannot let all of these shootings become the status quo. In Portland, Alma McCarty, KGW News. Meanwhile, a bipartisan group of U.S. senators is taking action to curb mass shootings in America. The deal could be the most significant federal action on gun violence in nearly three decades. This comes as the nation continues to mourn the lives lost in mass shootings from Uvalde, Texas to Buffalo, New York. A centerpiece of the Senate deal is to provide resources for states to implement red flag laws, which keep firearms away from people that are considered a risk either to themselves or to others. It would establish a more rigorous background check as well for people between 18 and 21 years of age. And among other things, the agreement would also increase mental health and school safety resources. The proposal has not been written in text yet, but reportedly has at least 20 senators that support it.